All right. Hello and welcome. David Kinder here. Today I'll, Today is December, what is it? The 18th, I think it is. And I just got in my new planner for the next year. And I wanted to talk about what I'm going to be doing for my annual planning for 2024 and going forward. Planning has often been an issue for me because I'm the hardest person to manage. And I'm talking about self-management. I'm not talking about, you know, working for someone else. That's usually a whole lot easier. But when you have multiple priorities and you have a life and such, a lot of the industry planners, and I'm thinking about one card system, I'm thinking about SAM books, uh, sales activity management planning systems, a lot of companies that have their own in-house uh, planners, they're usually great for that role in your life, which is your business. And the problem there is that I have far more going on. I have far more that I am aspiring to, far more I want to accomplish. I have far more roles, responsibilities, and whatever else is going on. And I have a feeling that a lot of other people are in a similar boat. And I wanted to show you the tool that I, and how I'm going to be using this going forward. Because the more that I look at this tool, the more I realize there's a couple of features that are never talked about the way that I'm going to be using this. So why planner pads? Planner pad, first of all, it's an inexpensive planner. Um, I just got this in literally about an hour ago, um, ordered a couple of days ago, of course, about 35 bucks off of Amazon. So you're gonna be able to find it there. This is a personal size as opposed to the executive size. So it's what, eight and a half, there it is, six and three quarter by eight and a half. So this is a shorter, uh, smaller size, which I happen to prefer. It fits on the desk better. I can easily put my keyboard uh, behind it or something. You know, it, it's easier to work with. And so here's what I like about this. And again, this is new. So I have no notes of any kind other than the tabs I put in. But it, it's a three-tier planning system. You start with categories of whatever it is that you want to accomplish. And you'll notice there's seven columns of categories. So you put your category at the top, and then you list things down beneath it. Then you have your daily things to do. So you take your categories and what you've listed, and then you prioritize it. When do you want to get these things done? And then you can schedule it if you want to in the appointments section. So it's a three-tier planning system. You have your notes here and your expenses here. I rarely use it this way. I'm not a fill-in-the-blank kind of a person, but this overall format seems to work for me. And here's the other thing that I like is that, you know, things that don't fit in the boxes, I just use sticky notes. You should see my last year's planner. I've got a ton of different sticky notes in there just because I, I want to write jot it down and then stick it somewhere. Now, here's why I think this works very well for me. Up here in this top corner, this is when you've completed the week, but you haven't completed everything on it, you just fold it, which tells you you've got other things you haven't done here yet because you have it's only folded. But when it's done, you cut off that corner. That means you're done with that week. You don't have to go back through and re-review, which means if I did my planning for one week, do I really have to do it the same planning the next week? Perhaps, perhaps not. But the neat thing is, is that even if I don't do next week planning or if I want to do different categories the next week, I still have the previous week right here. It's all still there. And it's right there, easy to review because I've either folded it or I've cut the tab off. And if I cut the tab off, then I'm, I'm good to go. Here's the thing that isn't talked about by any other planner pad review video. I told you there's seven of these columns uh, for categories. Back here in the back, and I've already labeled them with my own tabs, there's seven pages here that you can use to track progress toward whatever you want. So I have a tab here I've already set up for 2024 goals. That's page one, obviously front and back. The Professionals Forum, which is the event I'll be speaking at and helping to promote, and I'm sure I'll probably be involved with it for the next year. And even if I'm not, I can still um, cover this page up and relabel this uh, label with something else. Uh, in case you're wondering where I got the labels, these labels are from Avery. They're printable tabs. This is the one I got, and you know how Avery is with their numbers. So it's 16280. So if you want to find that on Amazon, 16280, 24 tabs per sheet. You just print them off stick them on your pages and use it how you want. Um, so I got the professionals forum. I have a reading list. I have so many books in my Kindle that I haven't touched. And I, I am tired of just accumulating books and not reading them. It's about time I start reading them. So I'm going to be putting that list in here. Studying. 
the studying is different than the reading because study is more towards an educational goal. So I've got my my eye on a couple of other designations and perhaps a, a degree program in the future once I'm up and running here. Uh, marketing, I have several marketing objectives that I want to get done. And so that will be a list that goes in here. And I want to make sure I'm checking that off. Relationships. Relationships are not necessarily something that you do. Get your minds out of the gutter, guys. But still, it's not something that you do, but it's something that you want to keep in mind. So you want to put down your important relationships to make sure that you keep them in mind. What can you do to add value to that person's life? You do to make sure that you stay in connected with that person. And also expenses, you know, various annual expenses and such. Monthly, probably not. But annually, I probably have different things I want to make sure I keep on top of. There are seven different pages back here because after that, there's nothing else. Seven pages, seven categories. Now you have something to keep track of for the entire year that nobody else is doing and talking about with these particular planners. Um, if you subscribe to, and I have a video on this, uh, Wayne Cotton's uh, No Brown Days uh, planning. He talks about an annual, uh, he does annual planning and color code of your calendar. Well, this is in, this particular version is in black and white. There is a green ink version it's very very similar it's just whatever you whatever you prefer you can still color code this that's not a problem and then when you go to the monthly calendar it's the same as the other one it, you can fill in the, the blanks of whatever you want color code this and then you have your master task list if you want to call it that and you color code different priorities that you want to accomplish for the month so you can still incorporate that kind of planning into your annual your monthly and your weekly planning that's what I like about this. I don't want to, for me, it, it's been a big weakness. I keep waking up and I go straight to my inbox. I go to my Google or and, uh, and my Outlook email. And quite frankly, I don't, that's not the right way to do things. I want to be far more proactive in my life on the things that are important. And I think that as long as I keep things in front of me, which just having the tabs there is helpful, putting the tab names up here and figure out what do I want to get accomplished this week? And then obviously, if this is a checklist, you can start checking those things off as you go. And this is a start to planning what in the seven habits, highly effective people, they would talk about you put in the big rocks in first, making sure you put you plan your priorities of what's important to you first. You also figure out very soon that you don't have a whole lot of other time left for production, don't have a whole lot of other time left for other types of events and things. So you have to be very judicious on what you say yes to, because Learning how to say no isn't just about saying no. It's about learning how to say yes to what is important so you can say no to what is not important. So I wanted to just create this because I think this is a fantastic tool. What I was doing this year as opposed to what I'm going to be doing next year is that this year I, I kept making up the categories based on like different projects and things. I want to do that less and less. I might have one category. You know, for example, the professionals form, that's one category that might be cycling in and out. Um, but I want to cycle that out for one other um, project if I happen to be working on a particular project. And so, but everything else, I want to make sure I'm making meaningful progress on what's most important to me. And this gives me far more clarity, I believe, is what's going to happen with this. So I wanted to share this. Um, again, as far as a planner is concerned, it's, it's still basic. You know, I mean, in the beginning, you know, you've got, you know, personal information, not a big deal. You got contact numbers that I'll never use because I, I have a smartphone. I have all my numbers in there. If you want to put in your the contacts that you're making for prospecting, that might be one use for that. Uh, you have a three-year calendar. You have a annual calendar for this year and for the next year uh, and the year after, three years. Holidays, like I'll ever use that. Time zones, I kind of know where people are at these days and you can always Google that. But the monthly planning, and I make sure I put in my events, I want to make sure I'm marketing, promoting, as well as attending. And the weekly planning, and then making sure that I'm making meaningful progress towards worthy goals. Um, other than that, this is pretty much it. Again, seven pages in the back. You can label them how you want and use that to keep track of what's important to you. So with that in mind, I just want to thank you for watching and listening. Make it a great day. Make it a great year. Use the tools that's going to work best for you. This is just one tool, but I want to use this to be far more in control. I just don't like the notion or just the feeling or the thought that things are falling through the cracks that are important to me. And if I have something like this, maybe that feeling won't happen nearly as much because I'm going to stay on top of what's most important to me. Leave it at that. Thanks for watching and listening. Make it a great day.